<laughs> yeah, honestly, I ain't gonna lie, dude. You're you're one of the the coolest things about coming to this shop because you never really meet other amputees in tattooing, and when you do, you know, it's cool. But like seeing you come up from apprentice, uh, but also you already know this fucking struggle. So like the interesting part about watching you go through the struggle of I'm an apprentice, but I also already know how to lose my leg. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because that's some wild shit. Dude. It has like, to be a good skill to have. It's an right? amazing skill, dog. Like it, there, ain't, there ain't no skill better to be quite honest, right. because like, when you want to kill yourself, when the chips are fucking down, when you want to kill other people, yeah. Um, when you want to kill the guy who you deem responsible for it, yeah. Um, but also, you're the rad movement guy, and you're the fucking positivity guy, and <laughs> you're the you know you're the sweetheart of the tattoo industry, and you got a fucking heart tattooed on yeah. your face. Like, you just kind of have to like shut the fuck up and do your job. Right. And my job was to live the words that I fucking preach on the internet. Right. And that was like. Great, because I struggle. Like the part, the reason why I started the rad movement was because I struggled. Yeah. You know, so it was to like keep me uh, accountable. So it was like the ultimate accountability measure. Yeah, bro, it's easy to do those things on good days, right? <laughs> we have to yeah. apply them and find out who we really are on the bad days. Yeah, <laughs> fucking apprentices, man. God. Well, good thing this is a talk show. Hey, <laughs> that was cute and smart. Look at you. I, <laughs> Quick intro. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Thank you guys for joining us on this episode of Unemployable Podcast. Today we have a special guest with us today. Robbie, thanks for joining us, man. Oh, thanks yeah. for trying, not trying to say my last name. Nobody it, says it right. Is it Rapal? Ripple. No. Rapal? That's how my father would say it. With, with, the, with the A sound. Rapal? I say yeah. Rapal, but yeah, Rapal. Ripple, Ripple, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, I'm from up north. That's fucking is why. Your, is your dad too? So my dad was Cuban, but like when I when I was a kid, my family lived in New York and shit. So like yeah. they did a lot of New York stuff. So I'll yeah. be honest though, it's a lot more fun to say Robbie Ripple. <laughs> yeah. I do for real. For real. And that, that's why I don't ever correct people. Like yeah. my chick, she'll do it sometimes. And I'm like, dog, you ain't gotta be that. Right. You know? like, she, she's like, it's Rapol. I'm like, yeah, they, they, yeah, yeah. That's, that's how they say it, you know? Like, right. But it is like a weird thing, like if you know me long enough and you're still calling me Ripple and you ain't even tried to say it right once, I'm like, are we actually friends? We'd be <laughs> really good friends then. Right? Like they don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, no, I go by fucking Josh now. Nope, you're still Robbie. Fuck yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, get, your best you get the Jonelsons. Yeah, all the foreign people call me Jonelson. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, they yeah. think it's like handles one name. Oh, I love funny. that. Yeah. Jonelson. <laughs> <laughs> How was travels? Oh, it was easy, man. Yeah. You know, fucking, uh, you know, aside from the fact that we have the baby and my chick takes like 92 hours to get everything ready to do anything. Um, love you, Donna. <laughs> 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 but, you know, uh, actually it was kind of my fault this time because I needed to get an oil change. So, you know, she blamed it on me. Um, but, yeah, preparation to get here was a pain in the ass. The road trip was easy. I was doing fucking social media shit the whole yeah, time in yeah. the car, um, you know, responding to things and whatnot. Um and, but yeah, the hotel's dope. It's literally dope. I woke up, I, well, right before I went to sleep last night, I was like, oh, two minute walk. That's cool. Right. <laughs> I went downstairs to the lobby. It's like one minute walk. I'm like, wow. Okay. <laughs> Half ready, the walk right was good. Really oh, yeah, yeah, that's man. great. Yeah. 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 We were looking for Airbnbs and stuff, but like the price was you can't, comparable. You can't yeah. beat that. Right Dude, there, no, man. man. You know, yeah. like, especially driving in a fucking city. I don't live in a city, dog. Like, yeah. Melbourne's. A little big, a big little city, a little big city, you know, but it's not a city, yeah, you know, yeah. so it's easy. But yeah, Travels was nice, man. Fucking accommodations are dope. Shop's dope. Everybody's been warm and welcoming, you know. Uh, it's cool, man. I'm, I'm stoked to be here, you know, stoked to uh, be around Jonelson. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nice. You know. Yeah. So we were talking just before Cam did his weird uh, intro where he didn't even try to pronounce your name. Um, <laughs> but, about you, but you had it right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was the fun part. I, I, you, I you laid it up to you. <laughs> <laughs> you and Logan were talking. Mm -hmm. and we were talking about how, uh, or I guess you guys were talking, I don't fucking know, how useful <laughs> it is um, to go through the process of losing a limb, a leg, a foot, whatever it is. I wanted, I wanted to continue with that because I like yeah, that. Yeah, well, it's like you said, it's a good skill to have. Right. You know, like, I'm sure you can relate to this. 
the person you are post amputation. Oh, I just got emotions pop, <laughs> popped up. I didn't expect that. Um, the person you are post amputation is not the person you were pre amputation. Um, Insane difference. I mean, dude, nine day. And it's funny because, like, I remember hating life sometimes with two legs. And then when I was laying in the hospital bed, I'm like, wow, with, you know, broken limbs, with hospital beds, uh, or without, like, life can still suck. So you better fucking appreciate where you're at. Right. You know, like, so <clears throat> it was a road to, to, the, to the recovery part. And healing's an ugly process, right? It's a beautiful word. It looks gorgeous. Uh, right. I'm healing, bitch. Right. The fucking, the process <laughs> of healing is gross. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's really hard. So, like, the fact that we've been through, and especially at a young age, like, I was 38 when mine happened. You know what I'm saying? So, like, turning 30, no, I was 39, turning 39 through the process, so I had a birthday through all that. Um, but, yeah, dude, like, I was a grown man, dude. I'd been through fucking two divorces. You know what I'm saying? I'd fucking opened and closed businesses that fucking, I'd had so many ventures fail, you know? And then, and I had so much success. But then I also had this in front of me. And, like, Dude, you don't know what the fuck it's like to look down at one foot right. until you are looking down at one foot and you're wiggling your nub around and you're like, fuck, you ain't got toes. You ain't got a foot. And you're like, Ugh. you know, like yeah. so that level of strength it brings is insane. Like people when I was pulling the Cadillac with the hooks, people were like, man, I couldn't even do that with two legs and you're doing it on a prosthesis. I hear this all the time with all the crazy things I do, but like. I don't even think of it that way, except for like the deep internal part where my ego needs to protect me and make me feel strong. So I have to do cool. Yeah. Things, you know, yeah. but like when I fucking broke my leg off, then I started back in the gym. I'm like, I got to leg press a thousand pounds. Got to do it. It's just a thing. So I did it. And yeah. then I was like, this is fucking stupid. Right. Like, <laughs> I'm going to fucking hurt myself. Yeah. Like one day before the gym, I watched the Ronnie Coleman documentary and I'm like, nope. nope. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be that guy, you know? So, Bro, your fucking doctor's probably like, you did what? Dude, right? <laughs> we're, yeah. try we're trying to fucking help you out and you're doing this shit? Dude, my doctor is the dopest. So, I, I, so it happened in Kansas City because we didn't have a house. We didn't have, dude, we were living out of the RV. We had yeah. just bought our RV two weeks prior. And then I broke my fucking leg. <sighs> yeah. So like we of were just. Course, right? Right. Of Why would it ever happen at a convenient time? <laughs> that would and be easy. I had this plan. I was like, I'm going to spread the rad movement around the fucking country. We're going to go to 50, 50, different, uh, 50 different shops in every one of the 50 states and do at least 50 free love tattoos. And the only thing we're going to charge you is to pay it forward, right? So by the time I was done with this whole project, we were going to have 2,500 fucking people charged with going to do a good deed in this world, mm. right? And then two weeks after we got the RV, my the RV, my leg breaks off, and now I'm like, <laughs> my leg oh. breaks off. <laughs> yeah. Caught a flat tire, <laughs> dude. It, it really was, bro. Like I remember, like falling, and then like in those moments that are split second, I heard the snap. Yeah. And I was like, this is what Big Jimmy felt because Big Jimmy's a dude that does crazy suspensions, but he was a fucking from a crane. Yeah. And he had bungee stuff. Do you remember? Did, did you did you hear about all that? This was like I heard about it. Okay, yeah, I yeah. was at that convention. Okay, yeah. So and and Jimmy was the homie back then yeah. too. So like, for yeah. those that don't know, can can you walk us through the story a little bit of Jimmy's with yours? Mine? Yours. Um. So I was on an A-frame rig, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so and this was at a convention. Yeah, this was at a convention, Kansas City, um, Villain Arts Convention, and I had gone up on this rig a number of times, dude. Suspension was normal for me at this point. Like, right, not a foreign thing. No, not at yeah. all. It was fun. Like, I'm a maniac with hooks in me, dude. You know right. what I'm saying? I get to go have a bar fight without hurting anyone else or myself. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, I get all this aggression out. I get to fucking meet my demons. We party together for a little bit. Right. And then they go away because now they've fucking been, you know, they've been served a little right. bit. they got fucking, to chill a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, we did right. it. You know? <laughs> so, like, it was so much fun to do this all the fucking time. You know, and at a convention, it's a lot of stress and anxiety for yeah. me. I get travel anxiety. I fucking get people anxiety. Yeah. You know, like, I'm actually an introvert, but I fucking am extroverted. Right. So, you know, like, I forced myself to be the party guy, the, the happy guy, the fun guy, you know. So it was, uh, it was a lot. Um, so the, the suspensions would help me through a lot of my life stuff. So I would do them all the time. So it was a normal Friday night. Some people with hooks in their back come over and they're like, Robbie, it's time to go. Cause I would always tattoo to the last second. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. cause I'm like, I got to make money, but I also right, 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 got to right. fucking do this. <laughs> so this is the fucked up story about money. And 
Let's talk about money for a second and relationships yeah. with money. And a lot of us have a poor relationship with money. And I have been working on healing my relationship with money for a while. But I broke my leg off for 200 bucks. Right. So the homie, um, I don't know if you ever knew Steve from Senator when he was with them. This dude was the homie homie. So all day long, he's like, bro, come to the ball game. Come to the ball game. Come to the ball game. Must have asked me 50 times. I've never had anybody be so fucking persistent asking me about something ever. Right. So I was like, finally, I'm like, all right, cool. I'll go to the ball game. So I go to tell the other Steve that was suspending me. I'm not going, I'm not going up. I'm going to the ball game. And then fucking the one homie is like, Hey man, I want to get tattooed. I'm like, ah, I'm going to the ball game. He's like, I got money. I was, didn't ask how much he was. Like, I was like, yeah, sure. So right. canceled the ball game. Oh, money. Yeah. Yeah. Money. <laughs> right. Cause I'm here for money. Right. You know? heard of that. And then suspension, <laughs> yeah. you know? So I'm like, cool. I get to still suspend. And I break some bread. So after I tattoo him, he gives me 200 bucks. And like, this is not shade on him. This is like all my problem. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, so then I go and I fucking break my leg off. Right. So, <laughs> so we're going to go to the ball game. Didn't go. Money. Well, I was about money. Yeah. I was about to go to the ball game money. Right. And then I'm like, yep, yeah, no, sorry. Right. Money, tattoos, <laughs> suspension again, no ball game. So I sent my chick to the ball game. Yeah. Cause she's from Philly. And the Phillies were playing, so dude, she goes to the ball game and now has never left my side since because yeah. she left me alone once. <laughs> right. And I broke my fucking leg off. Yeah. I can't fucking leave you anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so it was weird, you know. So I'm laying there, like after I heard the snap, and like like I said, in succession, I was like, this is what Big Jimmy must have felt. Fuck, this is crazy. And then I looked down and I'm like, dude. <laughs> my legs over here yeah you know like i see inside my body and how shit. high up are you i was like six to ten feet in the air depending on where you measured yeah, yeah, yeah. um but like, like swinging back and forth that's what it was so i i like to run into suspensions yeah um it's the thing that like dudes used to do when i was a young baby suspender or yeah. whatever hooker or whatever the fuck it's yeah, called yeah. You know? Ooh, i like that term <laughs> i think it's sex worker but yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i ran into my suspension it's cool for the show, and then I time it with the music, and yeah, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's dope, right? Because at this point in time, I'd done so many, like, dude, I'd fucking get pierced, I'd go and do a motivational speech beforehand, yeah. and then I'd strip down in my underwear. Right. And now you're like, what the fuck is this guy <laughs> Anyway, doing? guys. Yeah, right? Yeah. And so, like, then I'd run into my fucking suspension, and with this rig, like, I would fucking climb up to the top of it and I do like a pull up from the fucking middle bar okay. and then I drop down and shock load. Oh wow. Right? That's that's pretty cool. Right. right. <laughs> exactly, dude. You know? Yeah. So um this time I was running and I started swinging and then I realized, oh, I'm really close to this one fucking post. Let me just climb on that for a little bit. Maybe I'll climb to the top. Then I was like, as I'm climbing, I'm like, wait, this is pretty far. I'm usually, like, way closer to the top when I do this. Let me just shock load now. Yeah. And then when he brings me up higher, I'll climb again and do my whole fucking thing. And so this is all, like, the quick split-second decisions, yeah. right? And then so I let go. And then all of a sudden, I'm on the ground, and I'm stunned. And the dude that puts me up is stunned. And we're just like... Like, we're, like, you can see it in my video on yeah. YouTube. Like, we're just like, what the fuck? And yeah. my legs flopping around like a limp dick. And I'm like, what is going on here, dude? Yeah. I didn't feel any pain because, like, dude, I just had piercings. Yeah. I just done a yeah. motivational speech. I fucking just stripped down yeah. to my underwear. And you front used of it all. The adrenaline yeah, in your dude. body is just None. bouncing. Yeah. None. So, like, it helped me. Right, um, But sure. the one thing I wanted was to feel my heel against the ground. Right. I just wanted to fucking feel that feeling and I couldn't because all the nerves are fucked. Yeah. Right? You know, like even if I took my floppy leg and put it on the ground, like it didn't work. Right, right. So, and it was only held on by skin. Right. So mm. like, Oof. then we waited about what, what seemed like forever was like 45 minutes or so for the fucking medics to get there. <sighs> um, then I don't know if my brain did this thing where I needed to connect to something that I loved, but the medic, I was like, you remind me of my son. Cause like I said, I have a 22 year old. Yeah. And, uh, so that gave me peace. And I was like, oh, cool. Jaden's fucking helped me with my leg. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, then they kind of mush it all in one spot and like kind of keep it together. Right. Uh, put me on the gurney. And then like it was a movie dog, like getting like being rolled out of that convention. Um, it was totally like a movie, like the slow clap. 
Yeah, you know, like fucking yeah. cheering you dude, on, dude. And then like that whole side of the convention is cheering me on, and I'm fucking like tears in my eyes, fucking you know, champion <laughs> yeah. arms in the air, and I'm like, and I, dude, when I'm on the ground, I'm like, how the fuck am I gonna afford this? We're going back to the relationship with money. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was like the first thing that I cried about. I'm like, fuck, how am I going to afford this? Like, right. I can't work. I, I'm essentially homeless. I live in an RV. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what the fuck am I going to do? My, 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 my income was going from convention to convention and guest spot to guest spot. Right. So I was like, fuck, what do I do? Um, so, yeah, it was just a lot. <clears throat> then, like, you know, we go outside and Al Fliction's outside and I always fuck with him. And I always tell him I'm going to suck his dick. And I always fucking smack him in the dick. So, yeah. like, I'm like, I'll fucking suck your dick out with my leg all broken. You know, I'm like, ah. You know? And then I get in the fucking ambulance. And the medic's like, he's in shock. <laughs> they're like, no, actually, that's yeah, normal. Like, no, normal. No, no, I'll, I'll yeah. suck his dick all the time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but, yeah. So, that was um, that was it. Then I'm, you know, in, and I'm in the fucking ambulance alone. Yeah. You know, because Donna's at the ball game. And then, you know, people are hollering at her. So she shows up in the hospital drunk. <laughs> and she's like... With a foul ball. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> she's like, he's going to be fine. I just got to show him one titty and he'll be fine. And she's like running through the hospital screaming this. <laughs> it was fucking wild, man. And then like I'm in the fucking, like, I guess the emergency room area or whatnot. It's all kind of kind of blurry. But there is this, this, uh, this fucking... Um, nurse and she was really nice and she was awesome and uh her name was erica and that was my second ex-wife's name so i was like how do you spell it and she spelled it this actually no she saw the tattoo i had at the time yeah and she's like that's my name spelled the same and i was like oh fuck all right well let's make some new memories with this name <laughs> dog <you know? laughs> yeah. but that chick is still the homie like we talk on social nice. media and stuff like uh, she commented on the the cadillac polling okay yeah uh, you because know, she was there dude I, yeah yeah i almost broke her fucking hand like I was scared I was going to hurt her because they were, they started doing the doctor thing over there and like they started whispering. Oh my God, it was bad. <laughs> you know? And then all of a sudden fucking, he does this thing where he's like trying to reattach stuff because I was losing pulse to my foot and I started screaming and I'm like, I can't do this. And they didn't fucking listen to me and just kept doing the thing. And that was when I kind of just had to go inside and deal. And then when I'm done with that, now, you know, uh, the, the pain trauma response of making jokes, right? Right. I right. was like, I was like, congrats, doc. You're the first person to really hurt me today. Right? <laughs> and I saw his soul just die. Yeah. <laughs> like, he didn't get the joke. Right, right. <laughs> it's like, it didn't mean to hurt you. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> trying yeah. to save you. Right. And I'm like, I'm, I, I, I know you're doing your job, but I have to, I have to be funny. This is terrible. Right. You know? <laughs> and yeah, so then... Uh, seven surgeries later, fucking at one point in time, I spent 40 days consistently in the hospital. Um, we didn't really have a place to go. So I was like, dude, when they tried to fucking let me out of the hospital, I started crying. I'm like, I don't know where to go. Right, right. Like, dude, what? like you don't understand, man. So, um, yeah, we spent like that, like I said, the first 40 days and then went to go visit my son, uh, who was graduating high school in Indiana nice. from Kansas city. And we were in the the hotel one night, and me and me and Donna continually mix up the words hospital and hotel because we stayed in the hospital so long right. we called the hotel all the time. Yeah. <laughs> like she had fucking art all over the walls that people had given yeah, us, yeah. And flowers and balloons. Like it was our room. Um, and so we go to see my son, and we're watching TV one night, and three different amputees all showed up on TV in a matter of like two hours. And this is when I still had my leg. Right. And this is like. Around the same time we discovered I had an infection. So there was this tattoo TV show I'd never seen before and have never seen after, never heard of it still to this day. It was about first responders, right? So this one cop. The fuck are you doing? I'm telling a story. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this cop got shot in his femoral artery or some shit, lost his leg, was on the force back fucking doing street stuff eight months later with a fucking prosthetic. So I'm like... That's where I got a lot of my prosthetic, like, knowledge. Like, oh, he made it. I can make it. So that was cool. Then I seen a fucking a dude on Running Blades on a commercial. Then Ooh. in the first Iron Man movie, at one point, they zoom in on a girl's fucking amputated leg. I never saw that before. 
but now all of a sudden I'm seeing this. Right. And I've seen Iron Man a bunch of times. Right. So I was like, whoa. So that was the night that we decided, okay, cool. Like, I'm ready. Like, yeah. I can lose my leg. And that was like three months in. And this is something I wanted to ask you because yeah. before my amputation, it was, you see an amputee on the street. It's, right. it's you don't see it very often. It's an abnormal right. normality. It's yeah. something that catches your eye. Um, after my amputation, everywhere. Everywhere. I meet them everywhere. Every Walmart you got people tapping you on the back, turn around, there's another amputee. Yeah. And everybody yeah. is just so awesome with it though. It's not, you know, it's it's a bonding experience. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Like comes out of nowhere. Yeah, dude. It, well, it's like the blue car, you know, like you don't you don't see the blue car until you're looking for the blue car. Yeah. You know, yeah. and now you are the blue car. Exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, holy shit. <clears throat> but yeah, like it was funny because as I was walking here today, I caught a glimpse of you real quick and I'm like that's why I see another amputee. <laughs> like, there's, like, this little level of excitement I get. Yeah, it's like playing punch bug. Right, yeah. <laughs> and then, like, but now you have, sure. like... <laughs> <laughs> or kick. Or, or what? Or kick. Kick, sorry. Kick. What's kick? Oh, you're the, being was, funny. Yeah, the like joke. Oh, you're being <laughs> funny. Oh, oh, oh. Kick bug. Did you me. hear this, this guy, Logan? Dude, how... And I you... Did. I didn't help him with that one. You work <laughs> with this piece one. of shit. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are using to heal your tattoos, but you need to use Saniderm. This is all I use to heal tattoos that I do. This shit can heal anything. Well, almost anything. Go to Saniderm.com. Use discount code CAMSUCKS. I know. It's a great code. To get 15% off, that's again Saniderm. No, but it's it's weird. It's like um, like Marines, right? Like when Marines see each other, it's like a thing. Even though they don't know each other, they know the Marines. They know they're like that's it. Yeah. But it's like we can see that we're Marines. You know, like yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. can see the Brotherhood right up front. And there's like I was just at a Mike Love concert the other night, and I seen a dude in a wheelchair with one leg. And immediately, as soon as I seen him, I was like, that guy, he knows. It's, and it's like you, it's like he knows. They know. We we know the struggle. Right. But like one of my homies. He lost all four of his limbs like a week after I lost my leg. Oh, wow. From uh, sepsis. Like he had strep throat and he went septic and then goes Holy into a shit. coma and wakes up with no arms and legs. Yeah. So like when I'm fucking hanging out with him and I'm tattooing him, like, man, I'm like, dog, like, whoa. You know, like yeah. he's, he's like the pinnacle as far as I'm concerned. Cause I'm just, dude, I got, I'm below the knee. So as you know, it's easier with below the knee. They call it a fucking flesh wound, dog. Right. Like, wow. yeah. yeah, because like you don't have to worry about your knee. You don't have to spend 40 grand on a fucking microprocessor or walk stupid because of the hydraulic fucking thing that was going on. Like, you know what I'm saying? The hydraulic thing that'll fucking make you fall. And like, I don't have to worry about all that, man. I just have this weird peg leg thing. And right. it doesn't take much for me to walk. So yeah. where you're at, and then the actual energy expansion, uh, the, the amount of energy you expend uh every limb you lose below the knee is 30 percent per limb extra energy okay. to walk okay and then when you go above the knee it's an extra 30 percent uh. so he expends 60 percent more energy just to walk around did I you know that logan oh. i expend 30 percent more energy just to walk around but you don't realize it yeah because like i'm just fucking happy to be walking you know like and and so that's part of the skill that being an amputee brings you you're happy to fucking walk yeah, and I remember when I first had my amputation, started my, my re rehabilitation, and started walking again, my um, prosthetic office put it in perspective like that, trying to explain the differences between the different amputations and the amount of energy it takes to yeah. compensate for that. Um, and it blew my mind whenever they, they did say that. They're like, oh, below the knee is basically like a scratch. And I'm like, wait, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean there's different levels to this thing? Like, yeah. what, what does that mean? It just didn't commute with me, compute. And uh, so when I got mine, it, it was just, I didn't think about one way worse than the other. It was just like, this is what I have to deal with. This is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, but I think whatever positive things there are in the universe that I didn't lose an arm because I can't imagine not having that. I made a mistake one time. I met a girl that was congenital with one arm, and we started talking about the fact that we go to the same prosthetic place. And I'm excited to talk to her. And all of a sudden, I'm like, man, don't ever say this to someone. I'm so glad I lost a leg because I couldn't imagine fucking losing an arm. And she's like, yeah, I wish I would have lost a leg. 
I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, and I'm like, God, I'm so sorry. Like, yeah. It, but, like, I mean, that's my truth. Like, yeah. Dude, the Tiger King show. Uh, that the the one dude that fucking lost their arm to the fucking mm-hmm. tiger. Oh yeah, and then was back at work like six days later riding, dude. Fuck you, that dude is crazy. Yeah, they're my fucking hero, bro. Like, <laughs> whew, you know, like yeah. I mean, and I was like on the road still, so between surgeries and stuff, we'd go to conventions and like, you know, and I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of cool. Being the guy in the wheelchair with a broken or missing <laughs> leg because everybody fucking loves you. Right, right. You know, everybody treats you good when you got your puppy on your lap at the convention and the fucking uh, health department's mad at you. You're like, fuck you. I'm fucking playing with my puppy so I don't yeah. fucking kill my brains. You know, like, oh, this, is, this is my house, bitch. Like, I'm like a 90-year-old right now. Dude, it's like, pretty hard to fuck with puppy and wheelchair right. at the same yeah. time. Exactly, like, dude. How much do you hate life and everything around you to stop that person? Yeah. Bro. Yeah. Just turn around. Bro. Yeah. L- leave it alone. Dude, I so I was I was telling this one story as I'm doing dabs in my wheelchair inside the convention. With a puppy? Not the puppy this <laughs> time. Well, the puppy was there. Yeah, just she just wasn't on my lap. Out for yeah. rig yeah. puppy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm fucking, you know, my little nectar collector. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> Fucking cop comes, gets me. What they gonna say? I'm gonna shake my nub at him and tell him it's my fucking medicine. That's so right. This woman's over here laughing. Don't really know why, but don't fucking laugh at me when I'm telling a stupid story. Right. I'm gonna fucking tell it better. Right. Didn't realize her husband was a cop, <laughs> and I was about to tattoo their son. <laughs> 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 so then the husband comes over and he flashes his badge at me. And the Pittsburgh police badge, when I googled it, is known for its unique design. And its unique design to me was fuck you and your fake rent a cop badge. You're not a real cop. Right. <laughs> so oh. I didn't know this until I Googled it. Right. So he was a real cop. Turns out his wife oh, is like that he, girl without the arm that I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's like, so he's like, hey man, I know what you're doing. And you're about to tattoo my son. And Did I'm he like, flip it? And flip dog, it back? He flipped like a fucking yes, yo-yo. He, he tried to play me like that, dog. I was like, man, my life has been a movie a number of times. So <laughs> I'm like, this wow. before you tattooed him? I didn't tattoo the kid. Uh, <laughs> so he's like, he's like, you're about to tattoo my son. And I'm like, yeah. When I tattoo my son, I get ripped as fuck. <laughs> like, so I'm not doing anything to right. your son that I wouldn't do to my own son. But I understand, man. Like, now at this point in time, I'm shaking, but I'm fucking too far yeah. in, dog. You know, like you're committed. Right? Yeah, I'm committed. Like, right. I, I can't, I can't be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Right. You know? So I was like, look, buddy, here's the thing, man. This is how I do things, and if you don't like it, I will gladly give you your deposit back, even though that's not something we do. Right. So you take the young man around the corner, you have a talk with him, and you see what the fuck he wants to do. <laughs> Dude, I'm still, like, shaking. I'm surprised, <laughs> like, it wasn't coming out of my right. place. <laughs> and so the kid comes around, and he was cool before, and he comes around the corner for, with his dad afterwards. He's like, I don't feel comfortable with this. I'm like, all right, little buddy, you go see yeah. the lady. You know, she'll give you the money back. It's cool, but, like... It, like that, like I said, I'm like a 90 year old. I don't give a fuck. Right. You know, like what are you gonna fucking do? I lost my leg, dog. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You know, like I drive my Cadillac, my 59, right? So like I got a fucking dope 59 Cadillac, and I got one leg. I don't have the handicap placard for my Cadillac, but fuck you if you're gonna tell me I can't park in handicap. Yeah. So I park that fucking thing anywhere I go in handicap. Right. Like, I don't have money. I, I, so I, I, I stole my mom's handicap thing for like the first two years, three years. Yeah. <laughs> and I rode around with it expired for like over a year. And then finally I went and got the damn thing. But like now I have one for the other car. But yeah, I need to get one for the Cadillac. But I don't even give a fuck. I'm just yeah. like, there, there's this level of just like, man, it, it's, a, it's a bad skill to have sometimes too because you get a little too cocky. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> I'm like, you're not, what are you going to do to me? Well, you could arrest me. You could do this. You could do that. But like, yeah, I, I try to not be that. But if I if I see an opportunity, I drop my card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, t- I get that, man. I mean, what I can relate it to is like when, um, like myself growing up, like struggling with drug addiction, homelessness. It was like you, like, and when I f- got clean and got my shit together, I'm like, yeah, Yo, you can't do anything worse. Than I already did to myself, <laughs> you know, like try, bro. What are you going to fucking do? Right. How are you going to play me? Like yeah. I already played myself right. hard enough, dog. <laughs> right. Like, you know, like, and, and it was weird. Cause like 
there was a settlement because Troy called me, the guy that throws the villain arch. Oh shows. yeah, like uh, I understand you said you fell, but like how did you fall? Like what happened? The rope broke. The rope broke. So it was improper rigging, and I don't know the actual truth, um, but from what I understand, it was like flag flying rope, not human suspending rope. So like we're supposed to use rock climbing shit. Yeah. But it's been said a number of ways, but never from the source personally. He, he has not ever come out and said anything, which I had a lot of pain to deal with that. This is the, the rigger? The, yeah, the dude that was doing yeah. it all. Um, he was in charge of everything. Um, but, like, it was said that he bought cheap rope to save money, but it was also said that, like, he couldn't get the right rope in time, so he just got this because he could get this. And I'm three times the size of any of the other people that he suspends. You know, they're usually, like, half a cam size and girls. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, mm -hmm. you know, you put a fucking giant crazy man up there, and right. now he's doing giant crazy man things, you know, like, you got you to gotta rig it properly. But the thing is, we look back, and, like, he had rigged me that way a number of times in the past. Yeah. But it's the integrity of the rope. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> now the people I go up with are 100% conscientious. Yeah. But yeah, the rope broke. That was, that was what happened. And, like, people, people blamed it on the homie that was fucking doing the ropes, um, which is not the case. But when I say doing the ropes, I mean, yeah. like, pulling the rope yeah. up. Um, wasn't his fault. But it was, it's, it's, it's the foreman, you know, the guy in charge of the job. Yeah, yeah. It's his fault. Um, so, yeah, it was just a rope broke. Yeah. Fucking the tension came down, and it was too much. And, boom. and you said it led to a settlement? Yeah. Troy calls me on Saturday, so that happened Friday night, um, and then, you know, people are telling me, you gotta sue, you gotta sue, and I'm crying, I'm like, I can't sue my friends, and Troy comes to the hospital, but before that, he called me, and he's like, you gotta sue, I'm like, Troy, I can't sue, you're my friend, yeah. and he's like, dude, it's insurance, you gotta sue, man, Yeah. and so, like, since then, I've been to Troy's house in Puerto Rico, I fucking suspended for the first time after the accident at Troy's house in North Palm Beach, like, so we've maintained a friendship through this. Cool. And that blew my mind. One day we're drinking wine and I'm like, how are we still friends? Remember when <laughs> I sued you? Yeah. <laughs> because I watched. And one? Right? Oh, like yeah. I watched somebody else sue him and he fucking blackballed her from his shows and like that was it. Like yeah. no more. And I'm like, what happened? And I'm going to leave out the parts that he said because it was pretty aggressive. Right. But he's like, you didn't fuck me. They had pre-existing conditions and they fucked me. Yeah. You didn't fuck me. He's like, I know you didn't have insurance, and I knew you needed a little bit of help because that's yeah. just gonna you're you're fucked. Yeah, everyone so needs like, help, man. Right. So um, yeah, there were there was a settlement, and it was a life changing amount of money, but not enough to fucking trade for my leg. Yeah. Um, and not enough to change my life to where I'm fucking like Al Pacino right. and Scarface. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, uh, it, I was able to buy my house. I was able to buy the Cadillac. I fucking splurged on a really expensive Frenchie because I needed a Frenchie. Yeah, um, obviously. But like. You know, I spoiled myself a little bit, and then I invested all the other stuff and things just to keep the shit going because I don't want to be the lotto winner yeah. that, like, loses it all yeah. in fucking, you know, five years. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I've got, like, real estate going and stuff. And, and the funny thing is, before the fucking settlement was when I opened my shop during COVID with no prosthetic. So I'm, like, doing fucking construction in my shop, either on a rolly chair <laughs> or, like, hopping around on one leg. Yeah. So, Dude, like, fucking Logan runs the shop. Right. Yeah, dude, like, you're just, it, the fact that you fucking are missing a limb doesn't mean shit. Like, it's, it's wild. I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's, it's just our life now. Yeah. It, it is what it is. Yeah, like, you know? so, like, you're the only person in this room that's going to fully understand what it's like to just do this. You know? Like, yeah, man. This is. Robbie, that's rude. <laughs> It'd be rude Cover if I took yourself. my condom off. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I don't even think half of these guys have seen me do that yet. No, I really? <laughs> oh, I get super comfortable. Remember when we Fuck. made the video where I was holding your leg? Oh, true. Ah, yeah. yes, I did yeah. see that video. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah see, he's got a different one. His is ribbed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but, like, that, like, mine's different. Like, where I get mine from, they make the, the silicone part. For every individual person. Okay. So, um, yeah, I I had one of those one time, and I think I kind of liked it more, dude. Since since Donna was pregnant, they haven't been able to get my leg right actually. So now I'm like constantly battling with like, 
sores and fucking like, was it right at one point yeah yeah it okay. was super right and what like, changed to make it not right as your as your residual limb matures it gets smaller makes sense yeah like oh yeah the swelling and stuff that. goes yeah. down right yeah, yeah yeah because what happens is like your muscle atrophies like right. with me my the bottom of my nub is my old calf right so they cut down my calf and then flipped that bitch over and sewed it together yeah so like that was nuts. And then we were talking. So this is one thing that we both hear all the time from people is phantom limb pain. Right. And they call it ghost pains and they laugh at you and they fuck like. So if you ever meet an amputee and they're saying and you and you, you feel like, oh, <laughs> do you get ghost pains? <laughs> Don't fucking say that shit. All right. Because <laughs> like, seriously, that's the. I'll Cause share it, my story. You're saying because it's a real thing? It's a real fucking thing, and I would have killed myself if I fucking didn't get the surgery to fix my phantom pains. Gotcha. Like, like seriously. Like, I say five years, Donna says a year. Yeah. Because every five to 30 minutes, I was screaming and writhing in pain. Oh, wow. Is that if like I, nerve damage? And yeah, stuff like so what happens is um, you're, when they cut the nerves, the, your scar tissue grows on the end of the nerves. Well, scar tissue is either reactive or non-reactive. Well, mine was extraordinarily reactive. So it would just fucking, just, it just felt like there was an angry Russian in there saying, kill you. Yeah. yeah. And like, then they would flip the switch and then the electricity would fucking go. So. Yeah. And that's like added surgeries that people don't even think about. That was my ninth surgery. Amputation yeah. was the eighth. That was the ninth. And um, yeah, man, it was the best surgery I've ever had. But like going into it, I was like, this is the first elective surgery I've had. Right, like, right. Mm. So, so you're like, choosing it, to go. Right. Yeah. So like, if it doesn't work, I'm going to be mad. If I die under anesthesia, I'm going to be mad, you yeah. know, like, so like, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> phantom limb pain is one of the weirdest and realest things. Now I still get it. And like, in the next couple of days, you guys might see me like grunt or like stare off in the sunset and just kind of, you know, <laughs> tense right. up. I'm probably dealing with it, you yeah. know, but I get it. 10% of what I used to get it. Oh, that's, that's awesome. So it's like, yeah. I can live with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's it, not like excruciating anymore. Yeah, exactly. It's like teeth once during the blow job, not the whole time. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. mistake. You that's know? all. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, seriously, it's, it's weird. It's weird how, how bad it is. Like, so that's why like, I'm very, very straightforward about like, don't be disrespectful when you ask about it. Right. You know, cause like it's a real thing, but like it hurts my feelings. and makes me mad when you make a joke out of it. Yeah. Cause it was the literally the worst pain of my life. Like I, I wanted to kill myself at some point because of it. Like I was excited to like end right. this because it was bad. Like dude, I'm fucked. So it happened December 20th, my amputation. So December 25th, Christmas, I'm on a couch eating as much Percocet as I can to like not hurt. And every so often, like, the whole party's going on, and Robbie's just sitting there holding his fucking nub, rocking and screaming on the fucking couch. And, like, that's weird at fucking Christmas dinner, dog. Yeah. Right <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you say? That's the spirit? Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. Like, go get him, buddy. You, yeah. you can do it. Uh, Santa's coming. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then once again, like, I found myself, like, hitting that pain wall so hard that I'd just be like, ah... Okay, and then I'd laugh. Yeah, you know, and then you're just like laughing uncontrollably. Now you look nuts. Right. You know? <laughs> you were like, He's I'm crazy confused. Now. I don't yeah. know what's going on. Yeah. Ah. yeah. So it was it was weird, but yeah, phantom limb pain is one of the worst things you'll ever experience if you ever experience it. Right. And it was funny. Like I was talking to Tyler one day. And I was like, do you get it? And he's like, thanks, motherfucker. Now it's happening because he just lost <laughs> a little bit of yeah. his finger. Right. But like. Nerves are nerves, man. Dude, yeah. I was like, so but like today. I've had people fucking like be jealous of me for getting a settlement. Right. I'm like, cool. You want to lose your leg, dog? Yeah, like, come here. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll trade you a leg for the things. Like, yeah. cause dude, in business you get money. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to get to, I was going to get to where I am now, regardless. It just cut a couple years off the process, right. you know? So like, but the humility you learn, the fucking strength that you gain, you know, like, and then, being being the guy that does the fucking motivational stuff, right? Like the inspiration you get to give others just by being your fucking self, that's kind of cool for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I was doing that already to begin with, you know? So like now I like have a, a deeper purpose with it. Um it's almost like there's more power to like what you're doing now. Way more power. Yeah. yeah. Cause like, you know, 
the guy in the flamingo outfit walks on stage or the guy in the flamingo outfit with a missing leg walks on stage. Yeah. There's impact in both places, but like you're going to listen to the guy with the one leg fucking a lot more, man. Yeah, and it's so weird because like, I don't know if you go through this where you like don't realize you're missing a limb. There are times and days I forget it, you know, because like I said, this is our life. We just go about our daily thing yeah. and, you know, people see us doing these daily activities and they're like, oh, that's so inspirational. And it's like, dude, I'm just living my life. Like, right. just, I have no choice in this matter. I'm not trying to be inspiration. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you can get something out of it. Right. And I'm glad I can provide that for you. I love it. Um, but yeah, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, there's, it's, it's weird. Like I'll, it's, it's weird. And, and people also look at you with, you know, like you've been through something so traumatic and everything. And they ask you these insightful questions and it's like, you're looked at, you looked at on a pedestal sometimes, like as just kind of having like some life experience, you know, wisdom. Yeah. And like you said, you gain a lot of humility and respect and it just makes you a humble person. It does. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. It's weird. Cause like I'll, I'll be walking around just being all, being all humble Robbie. <laughs> and then I'll like catch a fucking like my, uh, my shadow. Or I'll like catch myself in the mirror and I'll be like, oh shit, dog, you're missing a leg. Right. You're know, like, whoa. And so it's really interesting, like, how that is a real thing in my life now. And it's like a real, 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 real thing. Um, and so the weird thing is, like, I'll celebrate those moments in my head a little bit. Like, I'll get a little giggle about it. I'll be like, huh, you forgot you fucking was missing a leg, dude. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. You know? And that that's amazing because. It is amazing because at one point, you know, how much it does control you and rule your life in those early stages and everything. Absolutely. So when you do get to that point where you can forget about it and you're just living a normal life again, it's, it's, a, it's awesome. Yeah. And when you do have that realization, you're like, dude, I'm just, I'm just living. I'm yeah. Doing what I used to do. You yeah. Know? Dude, like when I went wakeboarding for the first time afterwards, um, I got on the water and then all of a sudden my body just went from regular foot to goofy foot. And I was like, oh, I'm still good at this. Yeah, yeah. And that was it. Like, there was yeah. no learning curve. I, dude, I'm still afraid to skateboard because I don't have the balance on a skateboard that I did. But for some reason, wakeboarding stuck with me. And it just changed my stance, though. So it was really yeah. odd. And I always battled with Goofy before. Like, I couldn't ride Goofy mm -hmm. comfortably. Now I ride Goofy mad comfortably. So I'm like, huh. So sometimes, it's like, the, the I almost said suspension. Um, you know, the amputation, like, benefits me in a certain way. And I feel like... Because your ego is there always to protect you, I feel like sometimes my ego will, like, get strong just to make me feel strong. Right. And then it's like, all right, well, now you can't fail because you have to be strong for you, not for anybody else. Right. So then when I'm over there being strong for me and people are like, you're so strong. I'm like, you noticed? I was over here doing my thing. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm insecure and just trying to be, yeah, trying yeah. To be my best me, you know? Like... And, and it was wild because then I started wakeboarding more. And then I went with a uh, couple of my buddies that are, they, they do a lot of my production stuff. And, like, they're young fucking beachside kids. So they're like, oh, go hit the kicker. It's fucking lofty. And right. I'm like, what do you mean? That thing's six foot tall. Bro. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm going to die. <laughs> right. And so the first time I hit it, I was like, you're right. That is kind of lofty. Yeah. All right. And then by the end of that day, fucking, I told him to stop rolling tape because I kept falling. Right. And then he fucking snuck some pictures of me in succession, and I did it. Nice. And I was like, wow, like, yeah. I can't believe I did it. You know, like, I never was able to hit that ramp with two legs, and yeah. now I can with my prosthesis. So it's really wild uh, how just, like I said, that ego protecting you and making you be strong, like the thousand leg press, like thousand pound leg press, like, it's fucking stupid, but I, I felt good being able to do it. Right. You know, I was proud of myself that I was able to do it. And then the fact that I could do something, like, so strong that I could actually hurt myself doing it, I was like, okay, yeah. that's pretty cool. I should stop. I just want to live. I just want to fucking live. And I don't even know how to live. I'm 42 fucking years old. Yeah. I'm a guy that fucking, you know, I, I teach mental and emotional wellness. Fucking, I fucking give that out for free all the time. I'm fucking constantly telling people how to live a better life, and I'm still learning how to live my life. And I think that's the biggest thing. Like, a lot of people ask me, how do you stay so positive? I'm like, it's a fucking choice. You know, like yeah. I want to be positive because I hate how I feel when I'm negative. So it's just a choice. So now I battle being negative because I know if I'm positive on purpose, it feels way better than being negative on accident. 
you know? Yeah. And so, like, people think I have magic. I'm like, nah, man, I just, I'm just intentional. Right. Extraordinarily intentional. Because I feel bad if I don't. Yeah. You know, like, the first life coach I ever hired, I remember crying to him and saying, like, I'm a fucking monster and I'll never be able to fix that. Right. And, like, that was a reality I truly felt. Yeah, yeah. But the beautiful thing is now, now I know that being a dad, having that dad energy, being a business owner, having to be a fucking a good leader. Yeah. Because being a boss is one thing, but being a good leader is a totally different thing. Right. And so, like, between, like, the dad and the leader and the boss, like, when people come to me and need me to kill somebody, then I get to be a monster. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but... I also have worked so hard on articulating my words properly. I will give you the option. You know, it's like the guy that fucking like puts his guard down and says, please don't fucking try and fight me because he right. knows he's going to kill you. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I'm like, look, hey, we can settle this with our words or I can just fucking make you leave. Right. You know, and like I can clear a room. I can protect people from bullets. You know, like, yeah. you know, I can I can fucking grab a couple people on my fucking shoulders and fucking run if we need to. Like, I know that that monster that's inside of me that I was so afraid of is actually really cool. Um, and probably sad that everybody hates him for being a monster. Right. Um, so when he gets to come out and play, like, it's a good thing. So I know that my dad voice is a good thing when I use it properly. But when I was the guy that was working five to six days a week with the brand new shop and the brand new prosthetic leg and going through all this fucking worry in my head and fucking managing the people and fucking doing tons of tattoos. I was not using myself properly. So I was overstressed and I was mean all the time Yeah, because I, I couldn't figure it out. Then I hired the fucking manager and then like I started putting more things on her plate and then I started paying her better. And then I started putting more things on her plate and then I'd pay her more. And <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, dude, I see in these fucking tattoo council things and uh, the, the Facebook groups and whatnot, you know, I pay my, my, my counter help $500 a week and that's a lot. I'm like, yeah, 20, <laughs> 20 years ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> dude. Like, you know, like my goal in tattooing is to have fucking management that that is getting paid six figures plus a year. And it's a career for them. Be yes, right? because dude, not a summer job, because do you want them to manage your business properly? Right. Or do you want them to fucking get treated like they get paid like a shithead? Right. You know what I'm saying? 500 bucks and free tattoos isn't a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to pay them fucking the average going rate for someone in their position then you have to celebrate them for fucking doing a great job. Then you give them fucking free tattoos out of the love and kindness of your heart because you fucking care about them and it's part of the celebration. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I, like, feel honored when my manager wants to get tattooed by me. Because I'm like, dude, you do so much for me on a regular basis. Thank you for letting me do something for you today. Yeah. You know, like, you take the money. You see how much it costs to sit in my chair. So please, like, thank you for letting me give this to you. Yeah. You know, and like changed. Dude, I remember paying a dude 50 bucks a day and fucking being honestly rude to him the way you are to Cam in the videos. Right, right. You know, like, you stupid fucking fuck. Like, dude, why, why the fuck would you do it that way? Nobody knows what I want. Right. <laughs> you know, like, right. <laughs> I, I don't even know what I want. So how can I expect you? So, like, figuring out, like, and that's the one thing about tattooing it's turned into a fucking multi-billion dollar fucking, you know, enterprise. Right. So, like, we have to fucking treat it as such. Yeah. yeah, we're outlaws and we get to play a little bit, but, like, why don't we just run it like a business and treat right. people with respect and, like, like, enjoy the fact that we have the coolest fucking job on earth. You know, like, when I worked with Longnecker, he used to say, man, tattooers are the rock star's rock star. And it's kind of true. You know, like, it's really fucking, it's a yeah. thing. And we have a really cool job and we get to live a really cool life and we get to fucking charge what we want and basically make our own hours and fucking go wherever the fuck we want. Like, I remember seeing a tattooer make a post. He's like, man, I'm in fucking Tokyo and I walk into a tattoo shop and I'm home. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, these guys know me from the social media and stuff, but like, like I walk into this shop and we're all the same. Yeah, and that's funny because I walked into a tattoo <laughs> shop in Tokyo once and they said Japanese only to me. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been the wrong one. <laughs> Must have been. Man. <laughs> that really happened. Did it dude. really? Yeah, they're super like that over no where shit. when I was there. <laughs> and and but but that's also those could have been guys that were held, holding to old traditional beliefs. 
w- right. I was fine with it. Right. And like kind of going back to what we're talking about, like I always feel bad for people that are like overly sensitive because you know what you're doing is you're giving someone else the power over yes. you. Right. Wow. Um, wow. That was fucking deep. Whew. You heard? Kind of. No, he's not listening. <laughs> he's, th- he's, <laughs> he's thinking about how he can upgrade his key. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm just picturing how they shooed you away in the Japanese shop. <laughs> A lot of people ask about my setup and the ink I use. All I use is Allegory ink. We have the white, the black, and the ultra black. This is my total setup right here. Get yours at allegoryink.com. We got a discount code for you, unemployable for 20% off all their ink. Again, allegoryink.com. Because I've had people try to attack me with whatever, like uh, right. addiction, like selling out on TikTok, um, anything, you know? Selling out. And it, well, I don't know, just no, things that were coming off my head. No, but like that's true. People, I'm sure yeah, they yeah, have. Yeah. And that's stupid. Like, right. And for you're, me, you're it's a dick just, for fucking capitalizing. It's like, and I'm kind of saying this like to myself and maybe any anyone, right. you know, that's getting discouraged with the tattoo community because that's, wh- that's where that would happen. It's like, I don't even know these people. And like, why am I going to let their opinion hold so much value like in my head mm-hmm. and, and walk around with that? And to be honest, even like close friends, like, yeah, I might take a little bit m- more look at it. But like, if if I know me, it, it doesn't mean anything. And then I'll even get kind of like shitty sometimes. If I like make a joke and it catches someone the wrong way, like, okay, yeah, part of that is on me, but, like, who cares? I don't know. That's, like, that's no, my head. I totally get you, and, like, and that's the thing. So there, there's a level of that you have to have, and then there's a level of sympathy and empathy that I feel like you have to have, too. Right. To, so like, all right, that's stupid that you're feeling this way. I'm sorry I did that. Yeah. You know, like, right. so cut out saying it's stupid that you yeah. feel this way and just, like, jump to I'm sorry I yeah. did that. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, I... I've been battling with that for years, dog. Like, I, I used to think racist jokes were really, really, really fucking funny. Right. Like, I used to think misogynistic jokes were really, really, right. really fucking funny. I used to fucking drop F slurs and N bombs because, like, I grew up in South Florida. Right. So, like, I thought that shit was okay. And nobody had really stopped me. And then I get with Donna and she's like, dog, like, you know, you're like a figurehead and shit. And like, people look up to you and like, you're doing this motivational stuff. And then you hurt people when you do that. And so that's the thing that stopped me the most from using old speech patterns that I thought were okay. Because if my intention isn't to harm you, then why would you get hurt? Right. Is that, and that's how I ran around doing yeah. that. And now I'm like, how about this? If I can fucking articulate my words to make a joke still and not hurt anyone in the room, then I feel better about myself. Right. So, and that's, that's me, that, that's my journey, right? Yeah. You don't have to be on that journey with me, but just know that I'm going to be softer, you know? Like, yeah. And that's, that's an intentional thing. Yeah. I'm so hard and I'm so rigid and I'm so fucking tough sometimes that like, I need to intentionally soften so that way we can live a better life together. Right. And I noticed that a lot of the things I did hurt people on accident. But like also, I do notice that I will be the best version of myself and do my fucking best and still hurt people. Yeah. So like there's a level of like comfort you have to get to and there's a level of like dialing back who you are um, and still being authentic. Right. You know, because like, I'll never dial back my authenticity. Right. You know, I'm still, I'm still aggressive. You know, like I I still, I still get the point across and I'm still funny and I'm still crass, but like, I don't have to hurt people in the process, which is one of the things that I've learned. That's a dude. I used to fucking get mad when people would challenge me on that. Be like, you can't say those words. I'm like, the fuck do you mean? I've been doing this my whole life. And it's like, until you like turn the mirror around, Cause like if people didn't care and just like came up to me with the rude fucking ghost comments, cause when they're phantom pains, they're not ghost pains. You know what I'm saying? They're phantom limb sensations. You know, like there's, there's a whole scientific reasoning behind it. And if you fucking diminish it to a silly ghost joke, now I'm fucking upset at you unless it's cool. And unless we're all in on the joke, right? you know? So like, I know what that feels like. I know when I feel, and I'm sure you felt this when people are either judging you or like feeling some type of way about you because you're an amputee 
and like you feel that energy. It's like when you walk into a fucking restaurant and then now all of a sudden everybody's talking about tattoos. Right, you feel right, kind of fucking right, targeted. Right. You know? Well, I got one somewhere. You right. Know? And, yeah, and it's yeah, like, right. cool. So I can go up to a girl with big boobs and say, my chick has big boobs. Like, that's rude. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can go up to a black person and say, oh, I have a black friend. That's rude. Right. You know, like, you, you have to fucking know where to fucking put the words yeah you know and i'm learning where to put the words yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as you said i am not perfect homie Dude, you know what i'm saying all those examples you just gave like people being ignorant i think that shit is so funny Dude, <laughs> like I if i you. see it in public i i collapse but that's your dark I'm like sense more of humor. more yeah, be weird you're, you're making like, it worse ah, it's uncomfortable yeah, this yeah, is yeah. fucking hilarious yeah. right right and like, yeah. but my brand is something different, right? And I and I've had to realize if I'm going to create my brand, I have to live my brand. Yeah, you know. And then that's why I found a way to make myself stop thinking it's so yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like, I know. And like, I think part of it's like growing up, right? It's annoying. I, yeah, it is kind of annoying. Up. You learn to kind of compartmentalize it, and like, I have you know my group of friends that I can do that with, right? And then situations I can't, right? Dude, that group of friends is, they're terrible people. I'm sure. <laughs> they're <dude>. bad. <laughs> you know? And, like, it was just everywhere at first. And, like, like this group of people, uh, like, one of them, like, best friends. Uh -huh. One of them hasn't talked to me in a year because of a, a prank. Like, it's, it's, which I think is so hysterical. So you guys are terrible to yeah. each other. And I hope you still don't talk to me, Justin Crooks, you piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like like this it's like just the sickness like when someone close to you dies avoid that group because they're coming for you to make <laughs> jokes like it's like those kind of people yeah, and like dude, yeah yeah so i like have that outlet like i can put right, it there right where it used to come out everywhere and right. it was like at others expense right right and, 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 dude so you're on the same fucking train that i'm on you right. know what i'm saying i am just under a different level of scrutiny yeah. Because, like, I put out positivity right. on purpose. But that comes back to what you said about choosing and choice. Dude, when I realized that I had a choice to not be miserable, but it was going to be a struggle to choose, right. fuck, that was kind of cool. Yeah. You know, like, oh, wow, I don't have to be miserable. Like, because, I, dude, when I Googled how to be happy, I was fucking, like, I didn't think I could be. Right. Like, dude, what the fuck? You Googled how to be happy? Like, that's kind of sad. You're kind of a fucking yeah. sissy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying, dude? Like, <laughs> but the beautiful thing about that is it started me on this journey of finding a guy named Brendan Burchard who was taught by Tony Robbins. And the cool thing is, like, my dad used to read Tony Robbins books. I and love then, like, Tony Robbins. Dude, Tony Robbins yeah, is shit. I, shit, man. Dude, I, I was down in West Palm for one of his live events. Um, <laughs> he's probably and, one of the most inspirational people. Dude, he planet. so is, man. Yeah. And, like, we did this firewalk thing. This is after I fucking lose my legs. So now I'm like, bitch, I put hooks in my back and break limbs off. I can walk across your sissy ass fire. Yeah. Then on top of that, I'm only got one fucking foot that feels, dude. <laughs> so so I'm fucking cheating. Step. Was that? You only feel every other step. Yeah, dude. So I'm like, I'm cheating like fuck, man. Yeah. Like, get the fuck out of here with that shit. <laughs> but, but yeah, dude, it was it was wild that like through finding Brenda Burchard and then like, you know how the, the internet works. You fucking start finding things and you find more things. Then it opened me up to like finding business and motivators that I really were like into like wanting to change my life because of them. Right. And then I was like, Oh cool. I changed my life because of them. Why don't I do this? Because the people in the tattoo industry aren't going to listen to whitewashed Brendan Burchard the way that I am. Right. Dude. And I say whitewash cause like he wears all white, his backdrops all white. He's very like prim proper, you know, like, very nice, very polite, doesn't really curse, yeah. you know, like, and he'll be like, oh, well, you know, an act of service you could do to make your life better is donate to the church. If I run around telling tattooers that shit, I'm going to get laughed at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'd be like, yo, go help the fucking kid with no arms or some shit, you know? And then they'll be like, oh, cool. Right. That makes sense. Same <laughs> yeah. fucking story, man. Just different fucking delivery right. system. You know, hey. You should probably love yourself. Otherwise, you're going to fucking die or kill yourself. Either way, you're going to die. Yeah. So love yourself, you stupid fuck. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I realized that I didn't have to be perfect the way I viewed certain people. I could just be the, ver the authentic version of myself and hand over this style of information to people. Yeah, dude. And I think a lot more people than 
I knew originally in the tattoo community are trying to do that. Absolutely. They're trying to better themselves, Absolutely. improve, Absolutely. kind of get away from this. And when I was stuck in the perspective and like dismissing the whole community, like I didn't see that. Yeah. And, and I think more people need to like be vocal about it, you Absolutely. know, and, and, and what's the part that we can do, you know? And like, for me, like I try to always say like, yo, I'm sober, I'm in recovery. Like if you're at right. a convention, fucking come up to me. You That's know, if you're, whatever, you People know, people are terrified to come up to you if they see you on the fucking internet. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? It's the new Or it's TV. like, Hey, I have these struggles and like yes. things are not perfect. And like, I go through this and you know, maybe sometimes like I come off mean, but I'm just shy and like, and Ooh. like putting it out there. Right. That's huge. And, and like, Hey, like I'm, I'm right there with you and, and cool. That's my part. And that's your part. And Yep. All you got to do is like talk about it. Right. And doing know? it in your own authentic way. Right. And it makes sense when you be yourself, you know, like, dude, you're an inspiration to me just because like watching you come up in this game and like, I know it isn't easy to get shitted on like that, even as a joke. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It kind of sucks yeah, sometimes. Kind of like I'm sure. publicly to the world, you know? Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're a fucking you're <laughs> throwing sometimes. that in there bro. <laughs> <laughs> to the world. Yeah, dude, just so you <laughs> understand. Like, a lot of apprentices that get shit on in their shop, I get shit on to the world. Yeah. You know, it's like, but it's right. part of the game. But like, and that, but for you, it's pay to play. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause like how many apprentices have the following you have? How many yeah. apprentices probably have the workload? You I have? get I get apprentices that reach out to me all the time. They're like, "You're an inspiration." It's like awesome to hear that shit. You know? Absolutely, bro. My my homie, one of my homies, fucking the guy that did this fucking Paul Wall portrait on me. Um, Damn. Fucking yeah, <laughs> holy dope. shit. Yeah, fucking. Uh, his name is Eric Long. Uh, his his Instagram is Rock Platinum Koi. Um, fucking, he's in my shop, and he's a black dude, and he's end bombing and this and that and this and that, and like I feel a bunch of folks around us get uncomfortable. Right. Right. And so like later on, I was like, dog, man, I, I hope I didn't like call him out by using his name. Like, I love the man. Like he, he's yeah, a very yeah. good friend of mine. Sounds great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I, but I told him, I was like, dog, you are a fucking, you're a leader of your community. Every young black tour tattooer or, 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 or any black tattooer, or even just, you just anyone of any type of color that doesn't yeah. feel like they fit in can look at you being successful and being a killer in your field. And like, if you're using that language and offending other people, yeah, like you're, you're dude, you're, you're not using your platform for full good, you know? And like, he's like, my wife says that shit all the time. And I was like, yeah, Donna says it to me all the time. <laughs> yeah. and that's why I fucking changed my fucking speech patterns, you know? Cause like, dude, eighties kids, nineties kids, you know, we used to say the R word all the time. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Different like, story. dude, like, the F slur all the fucking time. Like it was totally normal. Yeah. And like, we didn't realize we were hurting people. Dude, rap music. Right. Yeah. Fuck. How many times do you hear derogatory shit in rap music? Every other line. Yeah. <laughs> Especially and, like the most famous right. songs from that generation. So what happens? You have a bunch of people repeating these fucking words and terms and fucking trying to normalize them, but it's not going to normalize the fucking parent of a child with down syndrome. They're never going right. to normalize that. Right. It's never going to be okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's never like you, you guys are doing your thing, but like, you know, the game, you know what I'm saying? You're a part of the fucking the process here. It's not like, you know, this is accidentally falling on you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You chose this role, mm -hmm. but like you have to choose the role of being the inspiration you're going to be. You know what I'm saying? And like, I love the fact that you're humble about it and you're not angry about it because You'd be a cunt if you were angry about it because you fucking got a lot of good out of it. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, like, yeah. yeah, go ahead and tell him. You can tell he him. He knows that part. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, it's like, but the beauty is you are able to be an inspiration. You know what I'm saying? You are able to help others who are in a situation that maybe they're not in on the joke and they're fucking broken hearted about it, but they see you making it. And they're like, fuck, I'm going to make it one day. Because, dude, I fucking, I celebrate when I see apprentices fucking graduate. Because yeah. it takes a real motherfucker. Like, dude, if you, yeah. like, I just took on my, my, not my manager, but my other front desk person as an apprentice. And, like, my manager came and she's like, Kat wants to be an apprentice. I'm like, I'm going to make her ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Like, yeah. That's part of it. Like, I'm not going to come up to you because somebody told me you want this. No, this is your job. Right. Because... If you can't ask me to be a tattooer, how the fuck are you going to handle it? Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I could be the sweetest mentor ever and tattooing will still crush you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like, like when a girl comes up and they're like, my friend thinks you're cute. 
It's like, well, tell your friend she's a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> right. For not saying anything. To exactly. Me. Yeah. Dude, no, for real. Like, how many times have you seen that? You know, it's real. So it's it's just really cool that you have this ability and you've been given this platform and you take it with an in stride and like you, I'm very lucky. Super dude, blessed. And that's yeah. beautiful, man. But you're also a murderer. You know what I'm saying? You're also a killer. Yeah. You're also way tougher yeah. than you fucking realize. I worked super fucking hard too, man. I'm yeah. sure you did. I'm sure you did. Hard. Yeah, I like still doing. Like you don't stop. No, you never stop. Yeah. No, dude, you you never stop. Like, dude, I'm 42. I fucking got this goddamn settlement. I got all these investments going. I got a successful studio. I'm fucking well known in the tattoo world, and I still fucking hate life. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm miserable still, <laughs> dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, one of my one of my best friends, he's a doctor, right? And uh, like, he started late in life becoming a doctor, so he's like, fuck all these pussy ass young kids coming into this shit, yeah. right? And then like, now he's he's way more humble about it now. But like, dude, one of the moments that I was having, I, we were on the phone, and I'm like, dog so fucking hard and he's like yeah i hate my life <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like i got all this debt i never see my wife i never see my dogs i'm always at work people hate me because fucking i'm a doctor yeah and he's like because you're a doctor so you're like upper echelon of society so now yeah. you're above everyone right in people's eyes right. and then they look up at you but also look down at you because you're up there right and what did it fucking take to get there? I watched him fucking... Yeah, 10 he, years of your life. Dude. And and not to mention the many years before where he was, like, doing all the bullshit, like, you know, low-level medical yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff, yeah. you know, to build the confidence to even go to fucking doctor school. Right. You know? Yeah. like, And he's like, dude, it's, it's so fucking hard. You know? And he's... But he brought up this beautiful fucking concept in that conversation. He's like, I love it, though. I love the music. <laughs> or even just the cha like the challenge the challenge too yeah. but like like knowing that what i got here wasn't easy to get absolutely yeah. and th that's where you celebrate it but yeah. then the dark side right i love the misery because i was a fucking emo kid yeah. i was a fucking fat kid yeah you know what i'm saying so what i fucking love to do is fucking feel sorry for myself sometimes bro when i was going through my second divorce and i lived in indiana so i'm a florida boy born and raised lived here most of my life moved to indiana for a short stint and then got divorced during that. And it was, it was fucking terrible. Right. But I would sit in my fucking, cause the shop had a loft. That was my station. So I'd, I'd sit in my loft late at night. Nobody would be at the shop and I'd be fucking drinking champagne and crying and Tinder swiping and feeling sorry for myself. Ooh, yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah. You, you know, just set the mood for me. <laughs> yeah, bro. And like, it was some of my best shit. Like that was my favorite times yeah, in Indiana. Yeah, yeah. Cause like, you need the misery, man. You need balance. You need to fucking you need to fucking give your monsters a fucking seat at the table because they're fucking there, man. Right. Your demons are there. Your monsters are there. And if you don't fucking give them a seat at the table, they're just gonna fucking want it, and they're gonna fucking be more and more insubordinate, and they're gonna get mad at you. Yeah, they're gonna fucking lash out. Like the the fun little parable, and I paraphrase the fuck out of it. Buddha was at his fucking you know his little his little man cave, right? And his fucking assistant answers the door, and it was uh, basically Buddha's antithesis, you know, like, I, I forgot what his name was, right? So the assistant goes to Buddha, he's like, this motherfucker's at the door, and Buddha's like, yeah, it's cool, let him in. He's like, no, nah, fuck that guy. And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, let him in. So he lets him in. So they have a conversation. And the dude's like, everybody fucking hates me. They all fucking want to be the, the bad guy, you know? They all want to be fucking, they, will, they want me to be you, and they hate me, and, and it's not good. And Buddha's like, well, you know, it's not that easy being me either, buddy. You know, like, people put me on top of their cars and drive me around in parades. I don't want that. You know, people say I say things that I don't say and then live by it. I don't want that. And it's like, that conversation soothes the rift between them. And the assistant gets to see that they needed that conversation. You need to have fucking tea and, and crumpets with your demons sometimes. Right, right. You know, because, dude, that, I didn't realize, like, I knew it, but, like, I didn't realize so in depth that when I suspended, that was me, like, allowing them out. Yeah. And, like, giving them a place at the table. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. <clears throat> that was that concept there. No, 100%. <laughs> and maybe consciously or, or not, I feel like at the shop, we're always joking about those demons mm. and things that people try to safeguard. 
Because that's the first thing that gets pulled out, you know, like Logan's leg or Cam's dad not being there or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> sorry, and <laughs> that, that was out of left field for me. It comes out of nowhere. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know. But like, that's also the spirit of the tattoo shop, like oh, yeah. the, old, the old spirit of the tattoo shop. Right, you know? like, right. Let's just be silly. The barber shop. Remember fucking Cedric yeah. the Entertainer's little fucking soliloquy about it. He's like, man, every nobody's exempt in the barber shop. Yeah. But like at the barber shop, your barber is your style coach. He's a pimp. He's your friend. He's your therapist. Like we're everything for people, right? You know, uh, yeah. And and it all gets brought out at the shop, and we joke about it. And it's like with people that love and care about each other. And yeah, I'll be the first one tattooing someone I don't know. And you know, keep in mind, there's four or five other tattooers, a manager, all the apprentices, like ten people. And I'm like, did I ever tell you this story about? And it's like something embarrassing about me, yeah, or like whatever. And it's just we're just talking there's no like limits there's no boundaries and you know you have to be careful yeah sure sometimes but right. in that spirit of like honesty and like yeah yep. it's fucking great dude and you kind of it helps cope with it a little the joke you know? that i love to fucking make is the time i almost shot a girl for cheating on me with a guy with one leg <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <Yeah>. that bitch <laughs> dude not proud of myself for this at all and if you're watching cassie i'm sorry right, right. <laughs> but like <laughs> I've grown a lot from then. <laughs> you know? right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I hated amputees for years after that, right. bro. Like, but like it, without that experience, I wouldn't have been where I am now. Right. But like to share that honesty with people, like, you know, if somebody's dude, one time a kid was telling me about how like he was doing these fucking things and people hated him for it. And you know, that's a default story. Right. I almost fucking shot a girl in the head in front of my son's bedroom 15 minutes before he got off the bus because right. you cheated on me with a guy with one leg. And like, that wasn't the best version of me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I grew and learned from that so much because that fucking hurt. You know, no matter what she did to me, she didn't deserve that type of fear. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? She didn't deserve that type of pain. Like that was me not knowing how to heal my old wounds and putting them on people, you know, cause cheating is a big thing for me. I'm not into it. Like yeah. I got cheated on before and fucking like, I don't like the way that feels, so I don't do that to others. So when you do it to me, it like it just brings out a demon that I don't yeah, want yeah, out yeah. there, you know. So like, you have to deal with it, you have to heal it, and you have to move on, from it, you know. And then you have to forgive yourself. That's like the biggest thing, man. And I know as as a former addict, you know, like you have to forgive yourself for all the things you've done, right? For the things you've done to yourself, for the things you've done to others, for the things you've done to your community, like man, those were mistakes. Those weren't who I am. Yeah. You know? And like, it hurts when people bring them up. So it's nice to bring them up yourself. Yeah. I mean, not to like fully dive into like the recovery aspect of it, but yeah, a huge part of that at the end is, you know, the amends and, yes. and that whole deal. And it's probably the most freeing part. Right. Like not only forgiving yourself, but like looking at your part in every situation to with someone you're mad at taking ownership, even if it's for 1% of the negative. Yeah. You know, I mean, bro, there was a time where, like, I went to amend a relationship with a chick that cheated on me and, like, make right for my part of right. not being present in the relationship. And I'm sorry that I put her in a position where she felt like she had to cheat. And, like, yo, you try to tell me that at, like, day one? No, fuck that, It's a bitch. big fuck you, yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. No, but it's, like, but I was, like, holding on to that. And the reality is in, like, any situation I'm involved in, like, I have a part. You know, whether it's making Absolutely. fun of Cam, whether it's tattooing a client, whether it's hiring someone new, firing someone, yeah. whatever. And like checking that and being conscious of that, it's really important. Because if you don't, you can accidentally hurt people. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And then at that part, it's just ignorance. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And it's funny because like um, I was sitting there drinking wine with Troy one night and uh, he, he started going into like the uh, accountability portion. He's like, I take responsibility for I think 10 to 20% for right. throwing the convention. I give you 20 to 30 responsibility. Uh, I give Steve uh, 40 to 60% yeah. of the responsibility because he put you up. You know, you made the choice. I made the choice to throw the show. You made the choice to spend. He put you up and wasn't conscientious enough. And so that's where we are. But no one's 100. Nobody's 100. Yeah. But in the hospital bed, I wanted to take Steve's fucking whole life. Yeah. You know, I wanted his house. I wanted his cars. I wanted his shop. I wanted him to suffer. I wanted to fucking take his career. I wanted to fucking end everything good for him. Right. 
And what did that do for me? It didn't get me anything more. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The fucking, the insurance fucking policies cap out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and your anger is only going to kill you. So, like, I learned how to, and, and that, that, that conversation with Troy was huge for me. Sure. Because, but it was the way he put it. Yeah. You know, because he's, he's a nice man with a nice tone, and he was just straightforward and honest. And, like, when somebody's straightforward and honest with you about something that hurts, it makes it easier to deal with. Yeah, and to be honest yourself, right? Because being honest with yourself is fucking miserable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah. there's so many times when I'm, like, in an anger spot, and I hear the truth. And then I also say, fuck that. Yeah, you know? yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And then like, you just keep hearing the truth and you keep fuck that, fuck that, fuck that until you cry or until you break or until you accept it. You know what I'm saying? So that cry or that break, th that, that break doesn't necessarily have to be crying. You know, that break can just be like releasing the anger by saying, what's my part? Yeah, like I'm just giving up. I'm not yeah. going to fight this anymore. Surrender, man. Right. Dude, last night I, there was this dude loud as fuck outside my fucking hotel room window for hours, and I just kept telling myself, surrender, dog. The baby's asleep, Donna's asleep, you could fall asleep, just surrender. Yeah. But you know, it's kind of like Disney. Every time you fucking go and do a guest spot or a fucking interview or something like that, like, it's like you get those nerves and that excitement, and like, like you want to. I was an early morning, I'm bad at early mornings, like sleeping the night before because yeah. my body always wants yeah, to wake yeah, up, yeah, yeah. you know? So, like, but like, I had to surrender to it. Then I fucking woke up 40 minutes late because my fucking alarm didn't have any vibrate. It didn't have any sound, but it also yeah. didn't have any vibrate. So <laughs> Silent alarm. Right? But I made it. You know? I made it. And, like, all the shit that I was worrying about, I surrendered to it. I didn't allow it to kill me. Didn't allow it to ruin my whole night's sleep. And now I fucking am having a great morning. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, like, that surrender part. Surrender's a motherfucker. You know, they talk about it in recovery. They talk about it in church. But, like, people don't really talk about it in real life. Right. You know, like... You have to surrender to the process. And that's also trusting the process because life is a process and surrender is necessary, but it's like really hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're an alpha type. Yeah. And you in know? the general public, it's associated with weakness, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Vulnerability is weakness. Crying is weakness. Surrender is weakness. But do you know how many fucking women were like, oh, I love the fact that you cry? Right. All of them. You right. know why? Because fucking so many men have this toxic fucking masculinity thing. Because we're all just afraid. And that's going back to the tattoo shop. We're all shy. We're all fucking misfit toys. Most of us got fucking picked on in school. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so what do we do? We lash back out against the world and be tougher and bigger and stronger. If you're in the wild and a cougar's fucking trying to kill you, you have to get bigger than it. Right. So we get bigger than everything that scares us to be that. And that's instinctive for us as hunters from, you know, prehistoric times. We had to get bigger than our prey to scare them and kill them right. or fucking let them chase us until they got tired. But like, it's natural for us to play these fucking hunter games yeah, and not realize we don't have to live that anymore. Right. Like we're in a safer place now. We don't have to worry about fucking cougars and bobcats killing us. <laughs> right. You know, like the reason why babies freak out when you put them down is because when those, those prehistoric times, if you put them down on a rock, and they didn't cry, they could get eaten. Right. So it's natural in us to make a fuss when we're scared. And so, no, I'm not a dick, I'm just shy. Fuck, that's one of the most powerful statements you could have said. Right. Because like, or I'm not mean, I'm just shy. Like, yeah. Dude, how many times was I mean in my head, quietly sitting there in a booth, angrily staring at everybody, wondering why nobody wants to walk up to my booth and pay me money? Right. Because I'm terrified to be there. Dude, that took me forever because I had the fuck off face from like being homeless. You know, I didn't want anyone to like come up to me. I just yeah. want to be left alone. Yeah. You know, and it, it was like years into being clean. Like it was like a girl or a close friend. They're like, bro, you have like the worst resting bitch face like ever. <laughs> you know, like and and being conscious. You know, of course I'm like, no, I don't. You fucking piece of right. shit. You know, and that's your fear talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's your protective nature. Right. Yeah. And like to kind of get away from that, and then. I mean, I'll let you in on the secret. The secret is I just didn't really, and I just advertised it, and now people expect it. I, like, lowered the bar. Yeah, yeah. So I'll meet people, and they'll be like, oh, you're him. Be mean to me, you know? <laughs> or, like, they want to take a picture, and they're like, don't smile. And I'm like, I'll try not to. Right. <laughs> you know, or whatever. Right. But right. what I'm really interested in is what are you scared of, Cam? 
Hmm. That's a heavy question. We're talking about fear and defense mechanisms and. I guess like tattooing not working out maybe. Like failure and tattooing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not meeting expectations. Of Is yours set- or others? Both. I set very high expectations for myself. So I like, I'm my worst enemy. I'm my worst critique at home, at night. Uh, mentally, I'm my worst enemy. Um, but just expectations from just everything. Yeah. What are your expectations with tattooing? Being, I've seen a lot of, I don't know, like there's like no nice, night, no nice way to say like stragglers in like our industry, people who just kind of like cruise through the floaters. Yeah. Yeah. Like trying to not be a floater, you know, being someone who makes an impact and is always growing. I think that's super important. And it's always something like you're super scared to like. Mm plateau almost yeah but get get specific let's not be afraid to get specific i think it's okay to have goals and expectations 100 percent. so go ahead yeah i I just think like not succeeding like having to find another route besides tattooing but no i mean like your expectations with tattooing is it like i want to be you know (coughs) booked for this amount of time like i want to be doing pieces that these people yeah, are saying they like. Doing, I want to charge this amount. I yeah, wa- you want to charge a certain amount. You want to do the tattoos in the style that you like and do it consistently. Um, so what is the ideal week? Five days, five full days, all tattoos. You want to do your designs, almost like no client input. It's like only purely your art. I mean, of course, client inputs, like, but I'm saying like your art. Like a little guidance. Artistic yeah. freedom. Yeah, 100%. Full like, f- people paying your full price for your artistic freedom every day of the week for months out. So that's having like trust of your clients. Mm-hmm. Yeah, being able to go to any state and still pick that up. You know, guest spot anywhere you go, hit a different country. It's the same thing everywhere you go. It's like that's how you know you've made it. You're and that's that's huge expectations. You're gonna for yourself. kill yourself if you try to live to that expectation. No, hundred percent. <laughs> but like, if you don't set that bar that high, I don't think it's become an option for him yet. <laughs> It'll show up one day. <laughs> right. Yeah, like you said, when the day that pops up as uh, an option, yeah. like as a as a warm fuzzy option. Yeah. When you're like, oh, I wish right. I could do that. It's like the one that's just glowing a little brighter. <laughs> you're like, Maybe I should choose that one. But you just can't. It just slowly yeah. gets brighter and brighter every day. Yeah. No, but, yeah. <laughs> but serious, that, that's huge expectation on yourself. You're you're carrying a lot of weight, Playboy. No, um, that's not like my, not my, he's like telling me to state my fears, I'm guessing. I don't know. It's weird. There's no like, you, you can't, you can't guess. I don't know. Everything's so. No, I, I think the way you answered that was perfect. And I think it's totally fine to think things like that. Absolutely. You know? But it's a lot of weight to carry. Right, but it's just sure. being aware of that. No, that's 100%. it. No, I think that's yeah. great, bro. Yeah. I like, think that should be like every minor, tattooer is cool. Mine are there, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> and, and You're just I sick. think it is as well. <laughs> it, it, it's okay, yeah. you know? Mine have become different. Mine are like, I want to fucking... <laughs> Like you have like a family and so many yeah. other things to worry about but than see, I do. I also want to fucking fly a private jet to yeah. Dubai with yeah. my family yeah. and fuck off for as long as I want and fucking hang out with sheiks and drive fucking Lamborghinis and shit. Right. Like, and fucking like just be able to like complete financial freedom and complete freedom with my time. But also complete happiness in all of that. Right. But that's not fucking real. Because if you have that much financial fucking freedom, you probably have a lot of shit fucking going on behind the fucking scenes that's going to drive you nuts. Stressful as shit. Yeah. Yeah. So if I go to fucking Dubai for a month, I probably have to worry about six dudes burning down the fucking place. Yeah. You know, so like, and that's why I say it's a lot of weight to carry Mm -hmm. because my my expectations are just as ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I want fucking mansions all over the fucking world, dog. I want to be able to fly. Like, Mm -hmm. so like I have really ridiculous expectations, (laughs) but like, yeah, dude, it's, it's a weird thing. And we all have our own version of ridiculous expectations. But I think also one of the things as a mentor and as a tattooer, we are so hard on ourselves that we don't, we, we're, we, we wonder why the fuck you're worried about it because I'm not as hard on you as I am on myself. So shut up. Right. You know, like, and that's how I lived for many years, many, many years. I was like, Fuck you, pussy. Like, you have no idea how mean I am to myself. So fuck off on that shit if you can't handle it. Right. You know? And 
things we have to work through. But yeah, dude, he, he's right. <laughs> he's right. That that you you did answer that perfectly, and like that's relatable as fuck to everybody watching. Mm-hmm. That's a, it. Not even that's just like every tattooer's tattoo goal. Almost. Right. There's right. anyone's goal in their industry is just be successful and be able to work you know, how well, you want. Yeah, yeah. Why shouldn't you try to be the best version of yourself? Exactly. Yeah. Right? yeah. But then on the other side of it, you know, I feel like I kind of did you a disservice by jumping in and saying that's heavy goals and that's a lot of weight because honestly you should manifest that. Yeah. Like I don't want you to ever take that off of the table for yourself. No, hundred percent. Like I was, it just goes back to like not wanting to be stagnant in the right. industry. It's right. just like always trying to grow. And right. if you don't set high goals, like what are you reaching for? Right. If your goals are like right in front of you. It's pointless. And one of the things that a lot of these fucking millionaires, billionaires and super fucking rich dudes that have made it in business and life say is you have to, visualize yourself having it before you have it right you know like i visualize myself with a house on the river with at least an escalate in the driveway but it, the fucking the grand wagoneer always shows up too you know and i'm like well if it's a fucking fantasy let's make it real you know right. let's have dude, all that, the things that's I that want. tony robbins shit right yeah you know, dude like with, with a fucking wakeboard boat yeah. in the back you know so i can fucking wakeboard every day that i fucking want to you know and my fucking now I have to have a kitchenette in my bedroom because Donna was like, that's really cool. Every room should be set up like this. So I'm like, let's do that in my dream life. You know, but like the life I'm living now was a dream formerly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like I've fucking achieved all my dreams. And this conversation is really good because this, this has nothing to do with the viewers or you guys. It's all about me at this point. Yeah. <laughs> like realizing what I fucking truly have in this life, what I've fucking worked for and what I've worked to maintain because I've received things a lot and then I didn't know how to maintain. But now I'm like working towards sustainability and maintaining and being a great person to myself and others yeah. in the process. And like, it's working. And goals are always getting bigger and changing too. And instead like, of... As an apprentice, your goal is to make it... Right. As an, as an artist. You make right. it to an artist, you're like, now nah, I want to be a good artist. And you make it to a good artist, you want to be, be a great artist. artist. Great yeah. artist. Yeah. You know? It just keeps growing. But you can't be mad at where you are, mm-hmm. which is where we default go to, I feel like. Especially if you're making the progress. Right. You have to like be able to step back and be like all right, I'm not happy where I'm at, but like, have I made progress from where I was a couple months ago? And if you are, that's good, you know? Dude, I had a conversation with my buddy Hip the other day. He's a tattooer, um, phenomenal tattooer. And uh, we were talking about abundance and like the abundance mindset. And like, you know, I struggle with it. And he's like, dude, it's not about money. Abundance is about all the things in your life. You know, like I have such an abundance of love and support from people on the internet and in real life. Like, dude, I had a fucking amputee coming to my shop crying because she was meeting me the other day. Like, that's fucking huge. Yeah. And to not accept that and to not like actually appreciate that is almost like slapping that person in the face and slapping all these accomplishments in the face because I've always wanted people to love and respect me and look up to me. And now they do and I'm like, it's not enough. So I have to remember, no, it is fucking enough. You're doing great. Right. You know, you've got what former you wanted. Now you just want something different or something more. You, know, you just want add-ons. You can't burn down the house just because you want an extra room. You add the extra room. Right. You know, <laughs> like, so just, like, keep adding the extra rooms. And don't be mad that you go through all the bullshit of building an extra room. Right. Because it's hard to build. Right, it's you know? work. Yeah. It's fucking work. Building is work. And, like, apprenticeship is work. Every part of life is fucking work. And I feel like we're all, a lot of us are searching for the point where we have to stop working or get to stop working. But like, that's not really attainable. Yeah. Always have to fucking maintain to make it sustainable. And that's a a hard lesson I've had to learn over the years. Yeah. What do you think, Cam? Life sucks. You got it all figured (laughs) out now? Yeah. Life sucks. Now he's more sad. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, I felt pretty good. It doesn't get better. (laughs) And you want to know something funny? to drive around in a green Kia Soul. Hear that? Classic muscle cars incoming. <laughs> yeah, for real. For real, dude. You know, hopefully not amputations, but you know. <laughs> I'm so mad my uncle sold like his, his 65 Chevelle like a year ago for like a decent price that I could probably afford right now. <laughs> now you can. Yeah, and I'm yep. like, fuck. Yep. Dude, it's funny. One of my one of my friends, uh, he let my son drive his Z twenty eight. It's fucking nice as fuck. And now, like, my son's got his heart set on it. He's like, I'm gonna buy that car. And if I don't, if you sell it, 
I'm going to buy that car yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to buy a version of that car. <laughs> like, but I love that about him, you know, because, like, right now he's door dashing and living with me and, like, nice. trying to get his music career off the ground. So, like, for him to be like, I'm going to buy that car, I'm like, fuck yeah, you are, dog. Yeah. You know, like. And you're going to buy me one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, dude, when, when it, Jack Harlow's his favorite. And when I listen to Jack Harlow, I'll always, like, text him or call him and be like, man, I can't wait. I can't wait until I'm backstage and you're Jack Harlow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, dude? Like, because like the manifestation thing is real. Um, and it doesn't have to be weird and it doesn't have to be fucking like, you don't have to make it a, a thing that's uncomfortable. Yeah. But just manifest what you want and believe that it's, that it's possible. Like if you don't think money's out there for you, look at all the fucking cars on the road and how much money they all cost. Right. Money's everywhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Look at how many vacant buildings there are that people paid money for and are just letting sit and can afford yeah. that. Like, there's abundance everywhere. And, like, we have to fucking get into the belief of that. And that's hard as fuck to do. Yeah. You know? But keep your fucking goals high. Don't kill yourself in the process. <laughs> Don't beat yourself up too hard. Grace for yourself is a big thing. You know, people always ask me, how do I love myself more? One of the greatest things is grace for yourself. Like, that's self-love. Yeah. Getting a massage. Self love, going to the chiropractor. I think even know? just realizing the work you put into things. Right. Like after a long day, be like, you know, like I can say, go to bed saying, like, I worked hard today. I tried. Absolutely. Like, that's more than enough. Yeah. And that's a version of having grace with yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. Because how many times have we gone to bed being like, I'm fucking not doing enough? Yeah. Right. Dude. Or like, oh, I wasted today. You know? Dude, the, the days that I fucking give away to just scrolling endlessly, like, and I'm like, why am I doing this? I'm like, wasting oxygen. Dude, it's so <laughs> weird, you know? And it's like, I already made the fucking bomb post for the day. I've already caught up on everything. Why am I worried about this? Yeah. You know, yeah. But yeah, it's, and it's a thing. And then also delegating. Like you said, you used to fucking kill yourself doing all this social media stuff. And then you hired people to do it. Right. Wow. <laughs> yeah. How when it's simple. like help and it's trust and like yeah. letting go and not micromanaging and you know <laughs> that's not tattooer's good skills right right, you know? like, right right and that's one of the things you want to change the design you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh because you're the fucking artist huh <laughs> and like that's one of the things that like these big business gurus say delegating is necessary yeah you have to learn how to delegate trust yeah and until you learn how to delegate you don't know understand what the fuck learning how to delegate truly means right. Right. so yeah it's a wild thing we gotta shut it down cam you want to give us a little outro? All right. Robbie, thanks for joining us, man. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Cam. Of course, dude. Yeah, thanks for inviting us, Cam. Thank you, yes, John thanks, thanks, thanks for joining me. <laughs> Ripple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, we'll catch you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in. What kind of autism wink was that? <laughs> at the end, dude? I hope you guys are enjoying this episode of the unemployable podcast we have the unemployable t-shirt it's okay also we have a variety of other clothing on the model citizen apparel.com you can even use discount code cam sucks for 10 percent off why are you guys standing behind me <laughs>